What's now? Image, we back again. We got another little quail bit for you. Balance, eh? You thought it was good the first time? Man, we had so much fun, we could do it again. Hello, my people, how you doing today? It's been a long time coming, what I have to say. Look at our culture, things are not the same. Let's not sit down and do nothing while it goes down the drain. Imagine going to dinner and ordering fish pudding as an appetizer. Or going to a bakery. <laughs> or going to a bakery and ordering black bread to have with your bush tea yes, or your coffee. Mm -hmm. Or imagine going out on date night. Friday night, you go to the movies and then you go to a quadrille. Or you go for drinks in a restaurant and you order your drink and you hear some quail bay. Maybe we'll hear the musical kafunas are performing or some other. On any given Friday night, not just during the festival season, not just Christmas time. Imagine that. Well, this is what we're talking about. What's now? Image. We back again. We got another little quail bay for you. Balance, eh? I, you thought it was good the first time? Man, we had so much fun, we could do it again. Hello, my people, how you doing today? It's been a long time coming, what I have to say. Look at our culture, things are not the same. Let's not sit down and do nothing while it goes down the drain. Please help me. Let's support the masqueraders. The musician and mask makers. All the way. We must prevent this from happening. Start today. Welcome to Preserve, Promote and Profit, a community forum to enhance our working knowledge of smart growth and uh, geotourism. Tonight we'll talk about Succeed and its mission to diversify the business development of the local economy for we, the people who call St. Croix home. Succeed is actually a coalition of individuals and nonprofit organizations. Before going further, I would just like you to see some of the faces behind this organization, Succeed. And as I call your name, just raise your hand so that the community will know who you are. We have Dr. Chinzera Kahina. <laughs> Colette Young Hines. Brandon Gerard. George Tyson. Paul Shawcroft. Okay, Michael Barron. We have Miss Mary Moorhead. We have Oshana James. We have people who are not here who are, you probably are aware of or you probably know them personally. You have Dr. Olaf Hendricks. And we have Olasi Davis. Hortense Rowe. I mean, the, light, the list goes on. The fact that the organization of this forum was done with the assistance of VI Conservation Society, C. Chant Farah, History, Culture, Tradition Foundation, Nature Conservancy, Marilyn Charcroft, wearing one of her many, many hats. Folks who were not necessarily in the office came, sat, and gave us some idea of how we could best, in a short time, with all of the things that are competing for your attention, get you here, get you good information, and get you mobilized. When a developer comes to the community in a respectful way, and when government understands how the community should be at the center of development. Succeed was formed in 2006. And this acronym for St. Croix Unified for Community, Culture, Environment, and Economic Development. And we want Succeed to be a household name. So our three projects are, go ahead. The Maroon Sanctuary Park, St. Croix is a heritage area, <coughs> and St. Croix Ahead. The Maru Sanctuary Park is located in the northwest of the island, or it will be. I don't know how many of you have been to Maroon Ridge. If you have, raise your hand. Oh, good, we have a good crowd. So the, the, the idea is to create a commemorative space for the Maroons. And some people say, did St. Croix really have Maroons? Believe it or not, I got that question. I was like, wow, yeah, we had Maroons. And pretty soon, we have a book coming out. 
uh, probably the end of this month or early next month, which is entitled Maritime Marinage from St. Croix to Puerto Rico, 1734 to 1848. And these are the Maroons that escaped from the northwest quadrant of St. Croix and made their way to Puerto Rico. Our second project, as Succeed was doing the Maroon Ridge Park, we were considering the cultural, the heritage, the entrepreneurial, the environment factors and preservation opportunities that we have because the intent is to create a heritage enterprise zone around the the Maroon Sanctuary Park. There was an announcement for a proposed NH, uh, National Heritage Area for St. Croix. So Succeed applied and became the coordinating entity. Basically what that means is that we get to develop the management plan. And so a lot of people are concerned about what is a National Heritage Area. What now? Image, we back Ooh, again. Yeah. We got another little quiz for you. Balance, yeah. I, you thought it was good the first time? Man, we had so much fun, we could do it again. Hello, my people. How you doing today? It's been a long time coming, what I have to say. Look at our culture. Things are not the same. Let's not sit down and do nothing while it goes down the drain. Please help me. So, following this, series of community fora, we'll have some planning sessions and we'll encourage everyone to come in. Third project is St. Croix Ahead and this is why we're all here tonight. And I just want to go through what St. Croix Ahead is. It's an acronym again, Action for Heritage, Economic and Development. And this is a collaboration between Succeed and St. Croix Environmental Association. We're doing a three-step process. We're doing the community fora, get everyone on the same page so that we understand what smart growth is, we understand what geotourism is, we understand how it impacts us. And then the second step, or the second phase, is to come together, have discussions so we can develop a blueprint. What type of businesses do we want to see here in St. Croix? What can, what can work? You know, what did our grandparents do? What now? Image! We'll sit down, we'll come up with the blueprint for heritage economic development. And this blueprint basically will be the tool that you can use to go to EDA to get funding or assistance with your business. What St. Croix Ahead is, is a piece of the puzzle. We're not suggesting this is everybody's answer. But if the people in this room and the people who come to this forum decide that this is a way they would like to move forward, then St. Croix Ahead is a way to help you uh, to do that. Grow the economy from within by tapping the existing resources. You don't fabricate a destination. You don't fabricate activities. You do the things that you do. You package them, you promote them, you do them in a way that is sustainable and, and appropriate. And that's the approach that smart growth takes. That's the approach that geotourism takes. That's the approach that succeed things make sense for our community and we want to share with you some of those strategies and, um, and approaches. What's no? The point that I would make about the smart growth is this. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we were just using computer models? Some of you have seen SimCity. We could figure out the impact of these developments and projects that people say they want to put on St. Croix. We can model it and we can see how it impacts our classrooms, our roads, our water. And it doesn't mean we reject a project. We can say, well, maybe instead of being here, it's here. And maybe instead of being this big, it's this big. But we're not using that technology. We're not using those tools. So something that sounds good may have impacts that should be mitigated. And that's what you do in a bona fide planning process that puts the people at the center of the process and then has the experts, the economists and the land use planners and the investment finance people, they are your consultants. What's no? In the absence of projections and rational planning, the free market system is going to saturate every piece of available green space and they're going to take your air rights. This computer modeling supports our ability to make objective projections of what this version called St. Croix can carry. The, how, much, how many people, what kind of industries, how many cars, how many built structures. Okay, Martha's Vineyard and other islands and cities, 
began tackling this issue 30 years ago. And when you say carrying capacity to officials in the planning department, they've told me it's premature to talk about maximum limits of growth. And I think when you live at 84 square miles, it's never premature to talk about it. Once you have defined what future makes sense to you, we can help to determine whether that's feasible given the resources. Do we have the human resources to support it? If not, how do we get our, our folks prepared to do that kind of work, all right? Can we support a certain kind of, of um, industry? What's no? You have the intelligence, we have the ability, we have the history to come together and decide what role makes sense for us and our future generations. So What's no? Image! Please come to the planning meeting and let us hear what you think makes sense. What's in your way? What's in the way of your doing that? What do you need to do it better? and then succeed, we'll kick into our role of trying to be a catalyst to make that happen for you. Thank you very much. Uh, some of our thoughts on the wonderful, exceptional uh, work that Succeed is doing. So the Department of Tourism has done exactly what we're doing today. Made relationships with our sister agencies to ensure that they keep on top of mind that this place, first of all, it, if, if it's something that's good for us, it's going to be great for our guests. So that's what we try to do. The Department of Tourism, although we're marketers and public relations uh, folks, we're also facilitators because we are invested in everyone that has a stake in this. An opportunity to host more quadrille events. We get to have more events that showcase our national music, which is Quelbit. Okay, if we can achieve this, it'll also benefit overall for what we're trying to do. Um, we generate local investment in historic resources, create opportunities for partnerships. That's what we're here to do today. Uh, builds community pride in our heritage. The Department of Tourism, we believe in what you're doing. We are going to continue to support you to make sure that we can help you help yourself do better. And at the end of the day, if you meet us halfway, we'll meet you the other way as well. Is that succeed? The Department of Tourism, our partners, are trying to be the gap between being a hobby, and I love to draw, I like to paint, <laughs> we're, we're the one that's going to bridge the gap between that and becoming businessmen and businesswomen. At the end of the day, that's what the Department of Tourism does. It's the same thing we were having a discussion in the last presentation. It's the difference between being a gardener and an agro-business person. That's what's missing in our community, that gap. And hopefully succeed and our partnerships will bridge that. At the end of the day, all these ideas must be put into action. And in our, in, in our case, it's about making money. If you don't know what tourism is, it's about making money. At the end of the day, the Department of Tourism and all the government agencies of the Virgin Islands needs to be asking for your input. If we succeed, we're so proud about what they're doing, and we wish, wish them much success, and we're here as a partner. And it's important that you guys continue to come out to the forums and offer your input. We have to be the one in the gap that brings it from a hobby to a business. Thank you so much for your support and enjoy the My name is Fran Del Gerard, if you didn't know. I'm the executive director of Cruzion Heritage and Nature Tourism, which is about a nine-year-old organization. So our mission statement is to establish heritage and nature as both the lead tourism product and the vehicle for sustainable community development. And the next slide will show our chant wheel. The first time I saw this, I was like, uh-oh, somebody was having big fun. What this did was put together what everybody in the charrettes and the organizers of chant thought chant should be promoting, and the areas that we want to focus on in helping local providers develop into businesses and become integrated in the tourism industry. Because too often on St. Croix, we are not a part of the tourism industry. We don't own, we don't sell, we don't participate. And with everything that's happening on St. Croix right now, I may be one of the few, but I think an incredible opportunity exists for us right now for not only defining who we are and what we want to be, but for owning it. Because real estate prices are going to go down. 
and everybody's talking about investing money in the EDA and the government and the feds and tourism, and now is the time for us to get ownership. What's now? Image, we back again. We got another little quiz for you. Uh, heritage performances, uh, nature tourism, historical architecture, arts and crafts, agritourism, the written and oral tradition. Inside that wheel in the little blocks are all of the people that we would call providers. And then the inner circle are Crucian and Heritage uh, tour operators, uh, chant, and then hotels and the entire St. Croix market. So we are already doing what Succeed is, is, is about, and that's we are the middle of that wheel bringing together the artisans, the craftspeople, and the tourism uh, uh, business and the visitor. So our, what we've done is what we call product provider business development provide business counseling and assistance in transitioning from that artisans and craftsperson or cook to restaurateur to business person. Some of our success stories are our chant providers. Veronica Gordon, Ross Lumumba, uh, Sandra Michaels, Sandy's Arts and Things, Asta Williams, who's a storyteller and one of our tour guides, uh, the Ridge to Reef Farm, we will partner with Wayne Bully Peterson and the musical Kafuners, Celeste V, Celeste Foy, uh, Carol Spanner, Cindy Mail, Keith James, LaVon Bell, Freedom City, St. Croix Safari Tours, and it goes on and on and on. And what we do is, for people like Veronica Gordon and Russ Lumumba and Rich to Reef Farm, they're on our website. We do promotion, we pay for advertising, and we've partnered with the Small Business Development Center. In that first year, we provided, oh, we touched over 5,000 visitors. One of the other things we've done is pioneered historical architecture as a tourism uh, tool. It's our big success. Um, we did a historical tour guide training and we did 14 days, four hours a day, and trained over 25 people to be historical walking tour guides. Christian stood in front. Environment benefits from our understanding and appreciation of the long-term economic value of natural assets that we otherwise might neglect, consume, or destroy. That is, we financially support the protection of what we perceive to be valuable. In return, the environment generates economic value back to the community. Not discounting spiritual values, man's relation, relation to environment may, at least in part, be measured as a two-way exchange of direct, indirect, and external economic costs and benefits. Non-consumptive use of natural resources can, resent, can represent real money. According to the Belize Shark Project, there are at least 42 species of sharks and rays in Belize. Shark meat is worth $1.50 a pound on the local market. While shark and ray tourism brings in about four million dollars per, per year to Belize, that has a population of under 350,000, i.e., sharks and rays are worth way more observed than eaten. <laughs> Likewise, coral reef conservation yields significant direct economic benefits to coastal and island communities, according to a report by the Conservation International. Um, the coral reefs of the Caribbean are. are contribute about three to six, three to five billion dollars to the economies of Caribbean nations. Direct spending by coral reef associated tourists contributed an estimated 92 million dollars to the economy of St. Lucia. That's 11 percent of their GDP. They have a population of 174,000. Direct spending by, by coral reef associated tourists in Tobago were uh, accounted for approximately 15% of their GDP, or $43.5 million. Their population is 52,000, exactly uh, right about the size of St. Croix. And diving on coral reefs in Turks and Caicos is worth an estimated over $8 million per year. Their population is 38,000. Economists could, could likewise project potential values of St. Croix coral reefs, day trips to Buck Island, 
Trails maintained for hiking and horseback riding to the Baths of Amelie or Wells or Wills Bays, the, beach, the beaches at Jackson Isaac Bays, or views from Maroon Ridge. Those are the direct benefits of uh, the economy. Indirect economic benefits derived from spending within our community by primary beneficiaries, including local spending on groceries, gasoline, rent, mortgages, etc., by those who benefit directly from the nature of tourism, is an important factor in attracting inward investment. For example, both consumers and businesses have been found to favor communities with high tree cover. These health and social benefits translate in economic terms to lower medical costs, lower social service costs, lower crime prevention costs, and more sustainable economic development, as well as an overall increased quality of life of our citizens. Our responsibility to future generations is to pass on the natural, cultural, and historical heritage that was delivered to us. As Jonas Salk put it, our greatest responsibility is to be good ancestors. Thank you. What's now? Image, we back again. We got another little quiz for you. With smart girls, we come to the table like grown-ups. We define a desirable future that we can all live with. And we know that, you know, what heart knows make eye water. So it's not gonna be everything you want, and it's not gonna be everything I want. It's gonna be what we can live with. And that's when you know you've hit it, when nobody is 100% satisfied. The time to plan and take deliberate action is now. We've been planning to plan, to plan, to plan. Okay, so we need to do that now. We need to look for the black sheep before dark. Plans. And as they tell you, Rooster, Rooster, make more noise and hand what lady All right, geotourism. Our assets equal the visitor's authentic experience. From the community planning point of view, the community regional planner's point of view, geotourism is a no-brainer. You grow an economy from within, and you grow it from within by tapping the existing assets. Small business is the backbone of any economy, and it's a winner when you can grow small businesses that evolve naturally from your local assets. That's exactly what uh, Prandell and Chant are talking about and doing. <laughs> but she needs to be. Uh, great job. Thank you. And you said, you said it all. It's a great community. It's a great community. And, and I'd just like to say that from day one, St. Croix Chamber of Commerce has been fully supportive of Succeed in this effort. But you're the leaders of St. Croix. Right. This is your island. Right. Right. And certainly we, we love the guidance and wisdom that the delegate, the governor, the legislature offers. But at the same time, it's up to the people every day, waking up every day and saying, what do we want for our future? The chamber represents about 300 businesses. And many of these are businesses with people you know. But we need to formulate an additional fabric to our society and to our economy. We have to take charge of the island and form what we want to make here. That to an outsider, St. Croix does not have an identity right now. And the opportunity is to create an identity for this island and through our geotourism, through chant, through our culture, so that anybody anywhere in the United States or Europe, when you say St. Croix, they get this feeling about the culture, the food, the activity, much in the same way that when I say to you, New Orleans, yeah. or the Bayou, yeah. or much in the same way, I say to you, uh, New England or New Hampshire and you envision the wooden bridges and the snowfalls and the small towns. It's up, to, it's up to all of us, but particularly up to you, to come and get to work. Present advocates of our local Caribbean. I am Navida Huggins, this is Rakia Andrews, and this is Clemric Bryan. We are sponsored. We are sponsored by Hertz, the Buccaneer Hotel, as well as the St. Croix Environmental Association. 
This is an economical proposal that was submitted into the agriculture fair that basically talks about mariculture as well as aquaponics. We are members of the Coral Conservation Course of the St. Coral Educational Complex. Our main focus is a fish called cobia, which is a deep sea water fish that is primarily found in the Caribbean. It's also natural, definitely environmentally sustainable, as well as the plant sites are actually used in tourism. This process is also natural because of our fish meal plan, in which we chop up pieces of tilapia, oysters, as well as the guts of other fish. And we're going to put these materials into a pellet, which is also organic because it doesn't have any methyl mercury, PCB, or preservatives that are not good for us. The shellfish can also be another form of export, and we can also use it into the fish meal plant to grind up and produce food for our juvenile and adult fishes. In addition, we can also do <coughs> coral mariculture. We can grow our own corals. We have electrical bars inside of the water. The electrical bars will produce carbon carbonate, which will aid in the growth of coral reefs, new coral reefs. So then we basically we will be growing new corals. When the clams are in the ocean, not only do they cleanse the water, but they also eat all the algae that are usually in the Caribbean waters. And this, is a, this allows the sun to get closer to the coral and help the process of photosynthesis occur, which would produce more coral reefs. Ages, they will be transported from the hatchery to the buckyball, and they will stay there until they mature and process, and will be ready to process. In addition to this, no predators can get in and no fishes can escape. In addition, they will be living in all natural conditions, no preservatives, no, not just all natural as if they were swimming in the ocean before. We just have them protected and fed with our natural food with, produced by the fish meal plants. In addition to that, we also plan to introduce the idea of marine aquaponics, in which we take the dirty fish water and pass it through algae beds where the algae clean the water and return the fresh clean water back to the fish. In this process, we'll be producing two products. We will be helping to grow the fishes and the algae beds will be used to create sushi rice. The cobia weighs about 22 pounds and is currently being sold for 6 to 14 dollars, which means we can export them globally for about 120 dollars. And normally, in the wild, the Baby cobia has a life expectancy of about 1%. So with our hatchery, we're increasing this life expectancy to 95%. Now imagine the amount of money we can bring to our home by selling 5,000 of these fish. Jobs, jobs. This is a major problem in the Virgin Islands. Jobs. We need people to work in the hatchery from marine biologists to construction workers, carpenters. Every person with a profession, a major, uh, a skill in the whole Virgin Islands will have a part to play in this whole entire project we are presenting here Thank today. Mr. John Farchetti for his expertise and for donating his time to educate us. We will also like to thank our advisor, Ms. Linnea Roberts of C. A type of tourism that aims to enhance the tradition, the culture, the aesthetics, and all those features. I want to talk about for the stakeholder scoping meetings that we already had. We had a few results that, that came out of that. One of them was the uh, was the vision statement for the National Heritage Area, which is published in the feasibility study, which will be presented to Congress uh, to see if they will designate St. Croix as a National Heritage Area. And an, through the qualitative analysis that we did with the stakeholders, we found some some themes through emergent theme analysis. Uh, and some of them were that where that St. Croix doesn't necessarily need to focus on developing new products as much as realizing products. And they, they, I'm speaking of, these are themes that were coming out of these public participation meetings, is that it's just a realization of what's already there. We identified those people who are already coming to the Virgin Islands. So we're going to have a, a segment when they, when they arrive and then when they leave, so we can compare their, con, their conceptual thoughts about when they were coming with how their experience actually went. Like our assets here equals the visitor authentic experience. Well, these descriptive definitions of what our assets are result in these pull factors. And when I'm talking about push and pull, I talk about these psychological motivation, motivating factors 
that drive or push people to take trips. So a lot of our research is trying to understand the, of the, the tourists who are coming to the Virgin Islands, and not just St. Croix, but also St. John, St. Thomas, and Water Island, what reasons, what motivations do they have to come? And this, the, the neat thing about this is it reconciles uh, the central theme of heritage or geotourism. This is really like geotourism typology. It's just so we can identify like who are the geotourists because National Geographic says that there's the study nationwide study they did. There's over 55 million Americans who are classified as geotourists. But of those who come to the Virgin Islands and maybe those who return, who are they? Where are they? What are their patterns? And how can we interface to them so that we can find uh, ways to link up what with the experience they want to have with what the stakeholders want to offer and live with every day. So, so we're going to three island ports. We're going to be studying the visitor patterns, the perceptions of nature, culture, and destination, using actual sample items from the geotourism study, um, the motivations which I talked about in the typologies. So this is what's going to come out in our study over the next year and a half or so. So we look forward to sharing it with you all. Thank you. Geotourism could be a part of a diversified economic base for St. Croix. And we have to stress that in fairly recent times, St. Croix enjoyed both a diverse economic base. We had geotourism before the word was even coined. And we exist to be a catalyst for preservation, promotion, and profit. At the end of this process, those of you who select to go in this direction to, to build your economic well-being, you will have defined what you want to do. You're going to tell us what policies or what are the barriers. We will create a blueprint that allows us to see for the east, west, and central part of St. Croix, these are the businesses people would like to develop or have developed and need to do better. These are the things that are in the way, whether it's public policy, whether it's process, whether it's business counseling, whether it's money, et cetera. Um, and we will then advocate that. We're going to share that blueprint with economic development because uh, with EDA, as you know, they're about to do a small business incubator program. When we had Ben Ross and 13 other watch factories, we had pharmaceutical companies, factories making winter coats and men's suit, carrot sellers, a Peace Corps training camp, and the Hare Krishna Spiritual Retreat Center. We had a roller skating rink. Visitors were met by, by an organization called People to People. And how many remember the 100 passenger sea goddess luxury cruise ship whose 100 passengers left more absolute dollars than the 3,500 passengers in the Costa Riviera. And when they docked in Gallows Bay, they hired local bands. Nobody really remembers folks getting mugged walking from the sea goddess to Columbia and Emeralds because it was a different sense about Venice visitors and our participation and our ownership uh, in that. You know, Rudy Schulterbrand had one of the first jazz festivals at St. Croix by the Sea. That book right there is going to make waves I think all over the world. Because everybody knows about the Underground Railroad in the upper 48 states. The Caribbean was no slouch. And the stories that we're finding, over 200, we documented, there were VR Social History Associates, over 200 Africans from St. Croix who went to, just to Puerto Rico. We're talking about where else they went and what that Underground Railroad looked like. So imagine when we do this inaugural celebration at Northwest next August, where we've been promised that. Maroon elders from Jamaica will join us, and Maroon interests from Puerto Rico will join us. What if that becomes a biannual event? Because every island in the Caribbean had Maroons. Every continent where Africans were enslaved, there were Maroon. But yes, our reefs and water quality need some work. But St. Croix did not end with Hugo. And even though our live bands are an endangered species, we come from hard work. We have a strong spirit and a great sense of commitment, and we have an even greater sense of humor. So, long as pray, God what? Amen. Thank you very much. What's now? Image, we back again. We got another little quail bit for you. I, you thought it was good the first time? Man, we had so much fun, we could do it again. Hello my people, how you doing today? It's been a long time coming, what I have to say Look at our culture, things are not the same Let's not sit down and do nothing while it goes down the drain Please help me 
Rasta for the masqueraders The musician and mass makers All the way Stay with your culture forever Learn from your culture Stay with you.